Welcome to the Brew Crew Podcast. Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 135, and we are in, uh, I don't have a name for this place yet, but we are not in the church room bar. We need a name for this yeah, place. Yeah, we need a name. I'll, I'll think of a name. Uh, and if you have a name suggestion, send it on Facebook. I'll hopefully see it next week. The official name is The Dining Room. Yeah, The Dining Room is the official name. That's where we're at. We're in The Dining Room. Very good acoustics in here. Um, yes, yeah, so sports news. I got sports sports ball stuff to talk sports about. Sports balls. You know, uh, uh, touchdowns, uh, photo finishes, things yeah, like that. Grand slams. Grand slams. All of it. Tour de France. Other than the WrestleMania event happening last weekend, which I'm not going to talk about, um, there's some controversy. And I'm not talking about the political controversy going on. Uh, you know, we agreed. Um, this is your escape, listener. But there was a call made. And I, this is why I want to bring this up. I don't know how you feel about sports betting. Sports betting. Sports I love gambling. it. So there's a call made in Atlanta. Um, and that's why I prefaced with the po- political thing. Same team, but different... Uh, D- different topic. Uh-huh. The uh, the Phillies were playing the Braves. The Phillies, uh, I forget the name of the guy. He's coming in to home, never touched the plate. Ooh. They uh, reviewed it. And so the I'm called him safe. They reviewed it. And uh, they still said he was safe, which is crazy because you can clearly see he never touched the plate. Right. So that's all well and good. But now uh, some of the bigger casinos who are doing, you know, online sports betting, yeah. they have refunded the over-under, basically calling the game, uh-huh. calling the play for the league, and the league has not come back and said that they were wrong or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, how do you feel about that? Do you think that their attention should be uh, much greater on the outcome, given that sports betting is not legal? So in so many places, this is not a beer topic, but uh, you know, well, gambling and beer they go together. Gambling, sports, beer—that's yeah. those are you know that's like the, take. the holy trinity. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I would say that facts matter and the truth matters, mm-hmm. regardless of how it affects the outcome. So if the guy didn't touch the plate, then technically he did not score. Correct. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So the the fact that MLB did not overturn it or correct yep. their error um is concerning yeah because then they're you know what's the motive behind that well i think that mlb believes that officiated decisions are final i agree with that i agree with that in a non-technical world yeah but they've implemented the instant replay or the review right <laughs> so who's doing the review so that's on them so, so they the re- send the review to new york city where they have a team of umpires looking at video footage. From, so there's like a team and they have all the games that are currently ongoing. So when the umps, right. when the coach calls for review, the umps call New York. Live. This Live is on real TV. time. And then they take as long as they need. There's uh-huh. no time limit. Yeah. And then they make a call to, to, you know, based on all the angles. So that so the, the guys in the replay booth so, upheld yeah. the decision? They upheld the decision. They, they said there was no clear evidence that he did didn't touch the plate but there was like he didn't touch the plate it's it's obvious and i'm not so concerned about making bad calls there's been bad calls in baseball forever um that's part of sports that's part of sports but there was uh when sports betting was becoming a thing uh i listened to the chicago radio show and i remember them saying that vegas will eventually control this yeah because sure fucking up no longer just fucks up the team and the players it fucks up you know powerful people sometimes or people who are going to lose money. And that's your, you're well, betting at your own risk. I mean, that's part yeah. of the game. But when it's so obvious, I'm actually pretty pleased that the casinos were refunding. They control it. was the over under. They control it. And uh, they don't care that you win or lose. Right. They care that they win or lose. Yeah, they care that they And then they, they care lose. about their credibility. Yeah, that, yeah, that's probably the big one. Yeah. Their credibility. That's, they want you to bet again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, that's so it's point. in their benefit yeah. to, to refund some money to make all the betters go okay that that feels good to get my money back yeah, yeah. i didn't get ripped off great point i'll bet again yeah so it's just an it's just you know an investment in their fan base yeah yeah i agree that's a great point i had not thought of that until now uh so not beer related but thought i'd bring it up 
Well, a lot of sports out there. Are. Yeah, they're and they're and you know, if you're sitting there watching sports and gambling, it's almost guaranteed that you're drinking. Almost certainly. Like I don't know. I'm sure there are people that are out there that do it sober, mm-hmm. but that it, those are probably outliers. Most yeah, certainly, probably. Yeah, I, I have I have watched sports and sports bet sober, but I would typically grab a beer. Yeah. Like when you, when you, so when I watch sports, I'm kind of passive. When I'm betting, I'm somewhat passive. But when I do them together, I'm like in it. Okay, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna watch my, my phone and the TV, yeah. and I'm gonna start, you know, matching this up. Right. Beer, gotta have beer. Gotta have a beer. All day. It's brain food. It's brain food. It's exactly right. It's brain food. It helps you uh, muster up the courage to pull the trigger right. on a risky bet. Exactly. You know, you, uh, my favorite being the insane parlays. Yeah, I like those. those. I like those are the fun ones. I like reading. St- I don't. I don't participate in any of this. Yeah. Um, well, we can't because do. Ohio doesn't have it. Oh, I tried. I thought you could do everything online now. Yeah, but it's uh, based on your IP address, so I could oh. probably mask it or whatever. Oh, like okay. Matt's probably figured it all out, but I, I'm just gonna go with you know whatever the law is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like reading the stories about how people will you know put down ten dollars yep. on like a crazy parlay of. Of you know, someone's got to bounce the ball off yeah. the off the you know the green giant or whatever, and, and right, and then the Brewers have to win in this game. Yeah, and yes, this, I love this has those. to occur, and then it all occurs. Yeah, it, and yeah, the guy makes like three hundred sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, I I did one of those when I was in Illinois because they have sports betting. Yeah, so I did a, a parlay, and it was six. You just had to pick six people who would score a touchdown mm-hmm. with the ball in their hand, and I picked the six. And all of them had scored touchdowns in like the previous two games. Uh, uh, so I did a little bit of research and I put $2 on this bet to win 20000 Yeah. So it obviously was a bad bet to begin with. Yes. Not a single of the, one of those people scored a touchdown of the six. Out of the six. Yeah. Whereas all six for the two weeks prior. Yeah, two previous weeks. So you were all betting. Six had scored a touchdown. You were betting that the six were going to extend their streak. Yeah, to three. Yeah. To three that weeks in a row. Real, real dumb. That was, yeah. I but the, the payoff was worth, worth well, was sure, two bucks. I mean, come on. That, and those are the bets I make. Yeah. I don't put a lot of money. I don't gamble, really. I'm not a gambler. But I'll put I'll throw $20 on a game with friends, poker, or I'll put two bucks on a parlay. So if the parlay was $2 for 20 20 K. Yeah. If you put in 10 on that, would that yeah. equate so, 100 K? So it's all multipliers. Yeah. It's the, each person you pick multiplies your bet. So no matter if you put $2 or a million dollars on this bet, you're going to get the same multiplier. Wow. Yeah. So you could that really is... win a lot of money, but I mean, you're going to lose a lot. That's see, that's where the temptation really creeps in because you yeah. justify like two, but 10 can, but 10, you know, 10 yeah. can get me a hundred K. Yeah. yeah. And you know, these yeah, guys... and that's, that's where addiction, that's addiction. Yeah. Like, really is what it is. And if you have an addiction, Seek help. Yeah, don't stop. Yeah, don't stop. Don't get in the game. Yeah, don't stop. Don't, stop. <laughs> don't don't start gambling. Yeah, don't I start guess. gambling. If you have an addictive personality, don't start gambling. Yeah, because uh, it's dangerous, and your spouse won't like it. In other or news, kids or whatever. Yeah, in other news, forty thousand pounds of Bud Light spilled in uh, Georgia yesterday yes. on the highway. Another Georgia story. Yeah, Georgia's, Georgia's really fucking things up. Big <gasps> well, I, I don't know. It depends on how you look at this story. I guess it depends on how you look at it. I look at it as, uh, you know, no harm, no foul. It's Bud Light. Bud Who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was on my way here, as I was thinking about telling the story on the podcast, I thought, I began to think about the math. How many gallons is that? Yeah. You know, because so it said 40,000 pounds in the pounds. article. Oh, interesting. So, so how many pounds is a gallon? It's a couple of pounds, right? It's got to be, yeah, a couple so pounds. So it's not nearly as many gallons of beer that, we, that was lost. No. You know. I would think maybe three to five pounds per gallon. It's five too that many. That seems, re- I don't know. I have no I'm idea. I'm not sure. I'm trying to lift it in the air. And right. I just can't f- feel five pounds. Gallon of milk. How gallon much does of a gallon milk? of milk yeah, weigh? I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking, three to five, somewhere in there. And then does a gallon of milk equate to the same weight as a gallon of beer? That's a good question too. I don't know. A gallon of paint. It's pretty heavy. A gallon of paint's really heavy. Seems like it. So uh, that's a lot of beer, yeah. So it just spills it's a lot out of on beer. The yeah. Well, there was a wreck on the highway. Okay. And and the beer truck overturned, and mm-hmm. you know everything busted and spilled into the road. So is this a is this like uh, a truck full of beer, like liquid beer, like in a tanker, or is this like packaged beer? I believe it's packaged oh, beer. Okay. 
Yeah. That makes it a lot different. Yeah. The cleanup is probably horrible. Probably terrible. So if it's just a tanker, you're just like, ah. The dogs Our, will get it. The thing is, is like, I don't think there are tankers of beer. I don't think so either. But the, the stories about beer spills are always written so much like an oil spill or right. a fuel truck to I would, or something. I feel like if there were tankers of beer, those would be targets of the mafia. Because they oh, the mafia yeah. used to yeah, like hijack cigarette trucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They would obviously hijack a beer truck. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean maybe they did. Maybe they do already. Trucks. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a tanker. Throw but a still, extra cases in there. a tanker of, you know, you see the... The gas and oil tankers, yep. you see it. Sometimes you see milk tankers yeah. or like liquid oxygen. You, I've never seen a beer one. Um, yeah, me neither. But I would like to. I would like to. Maybe we're seeing them and we're not. And they're just, you know. Well, maybe they're hidden. camouflaged. Yeah, they're camouflaged. just like the plain Jane ones. Plain or they're just, they say oil on it. Oil. And then it's like oil. Oil. Like your old white beer can. Um, yeah. That's a lot of beer. A lot of cleanup. But it's Bud Light. It's Bud Light. That's my opinion. I had Here's. a thought. I lost it. Don't remember what it what it was. Um. Yep. Gone. It's gone. Gone. It's okay. So I got a news story as well. Awesome. Um. Let me pull it up here. I did see that that Bud Light one. Oh, how do you get to your, you know, recent things here? Let's see. Um. Not to delay the listener. I thought I had it pulled up, but it just decided to like not be up right now uh, how do you technology. feel like there's bookmarks on this shit i don't know yeah i don't either um ask siri yeah here it is so in utah um they are there's a new interpretation of an old law that apparently uh is gonna ban bar some bars from serving to go alcohol to go beer mm -hmm. yeah that's not good um so bars, so there's four categories in Utah. Is beer 5% or less that is in a sealed container? 5% or less uh, in a, oh, that's can or bottle. Then sealed container, 5% or less gro crowler, growler. Mm -hmm. Then there's beer over in the same two categories. So there's four categories. So bars can serve, no longer serve any of those to go. Taverns can serve the beer under five in both categories, but not over five. Restaurants, no to all. Uh, recreational beer locations, which I'm guessing are breweries, uh, they can serve 5% or less, oh, but not, five, not over 5 which is crazy. That, I would assume that was like a bowling alley or something. Oh, maybe a bowling alley, yeah. That's probably, um, that's probably true, yeah. And then Type 5 Package Agency, which I know Matt would probably be able to tell us what it is. They're yeah. only allowed to serve beer over five percent in a can or bottle but none of the other three categories oh that's that's your does your liquor store like your state run liquor oh, okay. stores. State run. i'm assuming i don't know from utah but other states like ohio and new hampshire and states that i'm familiar with the states run the package stores and that sells liquor and beer yeah but tip in some states probably like in utah they won't sell the swill okay it's there's a yeah, that five percent is like a demarcation yeah, line yeah. where they can only sell above. They do that in Troy. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I hated it. Yeah. Um, they also don't open on Sundays. Um, yeah, blue laws, blue laws, and then off-premise beer, which I'm not 100 percent sure what that means, is they're only allowed to serve beer in cans and bottles under five percent. So really, no one can serve large containers of beer over five percent <clears throat> in Utah to go. So I've got. A, I think that's risky. It is risky. I got a few strings that I want to pull on that story. Yeah. The first one is that I don't know if I can think of, well, I cannot think of any brewery from Utah. I think we've had one. That's really? a great question. Uh, yeah. I just Let don't look it up about you. I know. So I know we've had Melvin from Wyoming mm -hmm. you know, and Melvin's great. And Wyoming is, is a pretty cool state. Um, but I'm not familiar with any from Utah. And then the, the other one is that, Typically, to-go beer, to-go alcohol, stuff like that was typically frowned upon in every state. And then the pandemic happened, and everyone loosened mm -hmm. those restrictions so people could stay open and, you know, at least sell something. You know, and, they, and you know, you can – a lot of places, you can go and get a styrofoam cup full of beer, and they put, right, yeah. they put, put a, a lid on it. it and then yeah. and you walk away with a craft beer in a, in a styrofoam cup driving down the road. Yeah. Which puts you in a bad spot, mm -hmm. I think, because then you're technically that's an open container and yep. that's bad news. Um, 
So I'm wondering if it had anything to do with, uh, did they loosen restrictions in Utah for the pandemic like the majority of other states did, and now they're just closing those restrictions? Yeah, is, good question. Is it tied into that or not? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. But also, I, I have, on top of that thought, um, I think they'll adapt. They'll figure out a way. Of course. Like, they'll just make more under 5% beers, one. So you'll get a lot of those. Yeah. And then... I mean, really, you're limiting you're limiting your stout drinkers is really all you're limiting by having uh, and some of the you know um, barley wine and and some of yeah. the heavier beers. Well, um, you can drink it. I think it's risky because you're you're forcing people to drink on site those beers specifically, which are higher than five percent. So you're risking. Why wouldn't you want them taking it home? What's wrong with that? That doesn't make sense to me. Take I it home. Know. I mean, yeah, they're, maybe they're thinking the styrofoam cups. They don't want them drinking and driving. But you're going to drink and drive. Some of them will, if they just go to the bar and drink these heavy beers. And they drink, people are going to drink and drive. Yeah. That's and, just... and then we're going to start seeing out of Utah. Epic, by the way. Utah. Epic is out Epic. of Utah? Yeah. Why? I'm surprised by that. I did not yeah. know that. There's a lot, actually. There, there's a bunch. I've never heard of any of them, but there, there's a lot. Yeah. Well, I knew that there's breweries there, obviously. It's just well, I wasn't know, familiar I, with I, Epic. I, if you told me that there was none in there, I would believe it. That there were none in Utah. Like, I, there's some states where I'd be like, yeah, okay, I believe it. Yeah. You know, just because they maybe don't allow it or people don't care about craft beer. You said something about bars can do this, and then you said something about taverns can do it, though. Yeah, so what, they have different the licensing. Difference? Yeah, they have different. So they don't do, like, most states have, like, commercial, residential licensing. They do it differently. It is based on who you are and what you are. So it, um, hmm. And it says that in the beginning of the story, uh, basically, if you are, it, there's a reevaluation of the state's law as part of the, the DABC, which is some sort of bureau. Yeah. Um, they are permitting sale activities by license type. And then they go over the license types, bar, tavern, restaurant, beer, recreation, type five and off premise. I thought... A tavern and a bar is the same thing, and it was too. just the owners that chose that vernacular yeah, yeah, of is, tavern. Too. That's because I like the word tavern. Yeah, I prefer to visit places called taverns as opposed to bars. Well, um, here we go. There is a difference, apparently. Uh, well, no, it doesn't. Uh, a bar is an establishment that sells alcohol, but not necessarily food. While a tavern sells food and alcohol. Oh, a pub is a tavern. Uh, but taverns are more associated with tourism and pubs with local communities. So there you go. And bars, who fucking knows? It's everything. Um, yeah, except food. Well, not necessarily, apparently. Oh. You can serve food. You can serve food, yeah. Like uh, King's Table, is that a tavern or a bar? I don't know. I don't know these days. Well, if you're it's in Utah, difficult. you need to know. We need to cut this red tape. Yeah, we need to cut the red tape. We need to Just serve beer. Yeah. Let people be people. Yeah, they're going to be people and they're going to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They're going to drink beer. Yeah. They're going to get behind the wheel or they're not. They're right. going to drink beer at home or not. Right. And they're going to drink while they're out or not. Yep. And I Utah can. can't stop me. No. I'm going to do it. The only Utah that could stop me is Johnny Utah. Oh, yeah. Johnny Utah. Yeah. The famed FBI agent that took down the dead presidents. He did that? Yep. Uh, I'm not familiar. I know Johnny Football. No. Johnny and Johnny Utah. Bravo. Johnny Utah from, oh man. I've heard the name. Yeah. Keanu Reeves. Oh, Keanu Reeves. Okay. Yeah. Didn't they call Fuck, what's Peyton the name Manning that something like that? What's like, the didn't name he have a movie? weird nickname like that? Hang on. Man, now that's going to drive me crazy that I can't think of the name. All I right. love the movie. Yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves movies are wonderful. Of course they are. They are. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Surfing. Though. No, you have, you've seen the movie. It's a classic. I haven't. Are I'm you deprived? I don't watch movies anymore. Well, yeah. I'm just kidding. I watch movies. I love movies. Point Break. Point Break. Ah. Haven't seen it, but uh, it sounds awesome. Everyone says it's great. I think it's on something. Netflix, Hulu, something. It's it, you could yeah. It's anywhere. Just buy it. it sounds great. It's so I'll buy it. I'm committing. Oh, you need oh to watch while Point Break. you get the beer, yeah, I'll watch Point Break and I'll, I'll report back to you. Yeah, the results. Uh, I have my bad beer. Okay, so I'm the odd man. So now. we have two weeks. Yeah, we have two, yeah, weeks two weeks to do terrible beer. Matt has procured his. You have 
now yours in yeah. your possession. I do. I was hoping for something more. Have you tried? You, you've legendary? tried it. You no, know? I haven't tried it. Oh, okay, so no. you're, you're you're shooting from the hip. So I'm I'm going to, but I'm gonna have Katie try it. Is that you think that's okay? I think that's fine. All right. Yeah. I want to see how it, it, like if she's just like oh, because I think it would be bad. I'm, this and, was all guesswork. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wanted something like legendary. I wanted some some no uh, shitty beer. Was that brewery we always talk about the Chicago Commons Brewery? Uh, but my mom couldn't couldn't get any. Pivo. Uh, Pivo was pretty gross. Pivo was was not great. Um, but I don't think it was like bad. I think it was just not yeah. great. But th I think these ones are going to be bad. Yeah. I'm ex. I don't. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm not excited. Honestly. No, I'm excited. You're excited I for terrible some beers? Bad beer. We have a lot of good beer on this podcast. Sometimes. Yeah. Last week you brought some real turds. I thought they were great. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. I thought they were good. So I've, I've reflected on that week. Did you? And I, well, just, you know, sometimes I sit and I think, yep. what happened? What I do you think I happened? can't tell you. I don't know. I don't know what, where the differences were. But I liked them. Yeah. I think the, the Three Floyds one... Threw us off with their blurple name. I, I, not not that it affected our taste buds. I'm just not sure where the disconnect happened. But it happens. That's the great thing about this podcast. Yeah. I like that we're not... I mean, typically we are in agreement. Yeah, most of the time. But it's nice when we aren't sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And last week was a great example. So tune, re-listen, re go back, listen go back to last 34. week's episode. There was some 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 uh, discontent. Um, we need a bottle opener. I'm oh, okay. I'll grab one of those. The podcast, podcast started. Uh, we'll go with this guy first. And I'm reaching into my little handy dandy cooler. Okay, I'll go ahead and introduce this beer while JT is gone. He will read quickly. This is uh, Double Mountain. We've had them before. Uh, this is their vaporizer. It is a dry hopped pale ale. It's six percent with fifty five IBUs. So I was just filling in right. the listeners on our beer. Sweet today. We got um, double mountain. Double mountain vaporizer. vaporizer. So what we're doing, what we're doing today, uh, real quick, is um, this is a dry hopped pale ale. Okay. So is the other one. Okay. We're gonna so do good. two dry hopped pale ale. We're gonna do a comparison. It's, yeah, it's like the uh, Kolschoff. This yes. is a dry hop pale ale off. Yes. They seem to be, I mean, so IPAs were all the rage for years and then sours yeah. kind of had their little run and mm. now it's like everyone's kind of going in different directions trying to figure out what's the next next trend gonna be. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of pale ales out there and I've seen a lot that are hopped pale ales. Yeah. Of some sort, so. Yeah. So we've done Double Mountain previously. This is from the craft beer mm -hmm. uh, collection that uh, Chuggalo Emily sent me. So this is courtesy of Chuggalo Emily. Um, and Double Mountain, I cannot remember where they're out of. Where are you out of? Mm -hmm. uh, from Hood River, Oregon. That's right. Hood River. So Such have... a great name. It is, yeah. Have you ever been to Oregon? Nope. Or Oregon? Mm -mm. Neither. Neither. I've never, never been. Uh, I lived in California, Southern California, so it's not like it's just down the street or anything. But yeah, never made it up the coast. <clears throat> never. Yeah. Like, no. I went to LA, Anaheim, San Diego. Yeah, but never anywhere further than that. I've let's see. I've never. I've been to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I've been, but not while I lived there. Yeah, I've never lived there. I've been to San Francisco, and I was only there for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and it was more like outside of San Francisco. Yeah. I think it was. I think the place I was was called Walnut Hills. Oh, okay. So it's not really like San Francisco. Yeah. But it was California. Mm -hmm. yeah, there it was In-N-Out Burgers. It is indeed. It is indeed California. Um, my sister used to live in Seattle. I would visit oh, her cool. occasionally. I've been to Seattle a handful of times, and that's uh, an amazing amount of fun. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed Seattle. But I never, and I've been to the other side of Washington State, Spokane, mm. and that's a really beautiful side of the state as well. But I never got to make it into Oregon, mm. um, and they just seem like such weird, like weird people. Right. Yeah. Such do. a there's such a Matt would say a juxtaposition of 
Americans there uh -huh. because there's like extreme liberals uh -huh. and once again not to dive into politics yeah. but there's they're just absolutely polar opposites oh yeah of extremely far right uh -huh. that's like hardcore we want our freedom and then uh -huh. extreme liberals which equally wants their freedoms mm -hmm. um but yet they absolutely hate each other yeah they hate each other it's a weird i didn't place. know that there was uh any like a conservative um group you know i guess they're in every state but yeah, yeah that one seemed pretty liberal um but yeah I it think does they're seem technically weird. ran by like hardcore oh are they oh no shit. yeah i didn't know that i think i don't know anything about i don't know oregon either. oregon all i know is what i read in the news yeah about oregon i i feel like some of it's legend at this point because of portlandia yeah and and some of that's been uh you know perpetuated through media social media and things like that so the like way, they like it they like it they there's like a motto in portland i think that's like yeah keep it keep, weird they, or something. yeah i think they had that motto first like stay weird or keep yeah, it weird something like that and then yeah. austin texas took it now oh, like they? all now all like you know i'm yeah. sure you could find like stay weird in yellow spring probably yeah you know? yeah uh-huh so that's a common phrase but i think that started in oregon yeah um I don't know. I I like to learn about um, different places I've never been by watching food travel shows. Oh yeah, that's a good way to. Because I love food. Yeah. Um, and I love to travel, mm -hmm. and I like th making that connection as well. When I do travel, I like to find places to you know hole in the wall places. Yep. Uh, that have delicious food, um, and I watched one recently that it's on Hulu, uh, and it's narrated by. Maya Rudolph, uh, okay. but I cannot remember the name the name of the show, but mm. the very first episode was Portland. Oh, cool. And man, it's like, it just makes you want to go to Portland. What do they eat there? Everything delicious. Everything delicious? Yeah. Cool. Like really good donuts. Oh, yeah. I've really, heard about their donuts. Really yeah. good. Um, there's like a great amount of fusion, which is probably typical for all the West Coast mm -hmm. of like east meets west mm -hmm. you know a lot of asian influence yeah i i love that food love it yeah i, I like fusion but i don't like fusion the restaurant i don't like fusion the restaurant that place grosses me out yeah yeah i don't like it i ate I've been there one, one and done, done. Yeah. yeah one and done that yeah. was it and i couldn't do it and and bibibop i don't know i thought that was going to be bibimbap i thought it was going to be a bibimbap place yeah which i love right nope because that's just a korean bowl where you basically throw a ton of shit in there bibimbap yeah. yeah yeah it's just um it's uh um what's those what are those black pots called like it's uh, like a clay like pot a, yeah a cast iron it's like they, oh. they throw a bunch of rice in a cast iron pot oh. and then throw a bunch of other spices and shit and mm -hmm. some meat and some of those you know long stringy <clears throat> things i can't remember what kimchi or something bean and sprouts and kimchi. bean sprouts yeah and they throw it in there and then they cook it in the cast iron and it burns the bottom of the rice so it makes it like crunchy oh kind of it's really good anyway i thought that's what bb bop was and this place is a chain mind you so they've yeah. done well this place was absolutely disgusting it's just a, it's yeah it's there they it's took like the a chipotle, chipotle thing and yeah. they spun it on asian food but it's like everything's cold at least when i got it it was all cold and it was just awful none of the sauces were good yuck yeah it's like the worst yuck. of korean food yeah that sucks because korean yeah. food is it's outstanding amazing. yeah it's awesome I've never had, I guess I've never had an authentic, and I don't know how to say it, bim, bim, bibimbap, bib, bib, imbap, bib, imbap, at least that's how I say it, okay, I don't yeah. know, yeah, there's, um, bibimbap, which you can get in a glass bowl or plate, and then there's dulcet bibimbap, which is the one in the cast iron, that's the one you should get if you, I need to keep got, that in mind, there's a Korean place on, uh, Wilmington, and there's, a uh, Young's has it, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. I don't know how authentic it is, but I like it there. I go with the safe route of bulgogi. I love, yeah, you know, yeah, spicy that, yeah. meat and rice. That, yeah. You know, can't go wrong with that. <clears throat> so that was my introduction to Korean food, and that's kind of my safe zone. My kids but go crazy to, at Korean places. I like katsu, like chicken katsu, the okay. you know, the fried. Have you ever had that? Yeah. <clears throat> um, katsu, I think that's Japanese actually, mm. but okay. it's like, like a you know, if we're using you know, you can do it with chicken or pork or anything, but they. Pound it out and, and then they use a particular type of breading and yeah. fry the shit out of it so it's super crispy and they sounds awesome. put cat sauce on it. It's delicious. It does sound delicious. 
Well, but it's not a food podcast. No, it's not. It's not. It um, should be because we, we could do we're really good at it. We could it. do that, but every Tuesday eating all these crazy foods, that'd be, <sighs> that'd be awesome, but it'd yeah, be crazy. We'd have to work out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to get there eventually. Back into the gym. You, are you? Yeah. Are you thinking about it? Or, or oh, yeah. No, like, I, I, I'm, I'm... You're ready. I'm like 90% ready. 90%. 90%. I, I think I'm always 90%. 90. Yeah. It's like, just get out there and do it. Because I have weights in my garage. Oh, okay. So it's not like I have to go anywhere. Yeah. I just have to get out there. Do it. it when it's at your house, yeah, that's... When we were working from home during the pandemic, I was working out every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a... I'd take maybe one day a week off, but even then I would do something. Nice. That's good. But then when I started going back to work, I just stopped. I just don't have any time with school. Yeah. Like I have, yeah, yeah. you know, all of my minutes are precious during the day. Yeah, right. And at night. Yep, yep. So you're scheduled. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. <sighs> so it's just too much. But in November, when I'm done, mm-hmm. I will consider working out. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, consider it. You don't have to do it. Just consider it. Yeah. Not, that right there, I mean, you, you, your, your metabolism seems to be pretty good. Just a you know, man-to-man compliment. Thanks. Mine, it's terrible. I disagree. Thanks. What do you think about this beer from Double Mountain, the vaporizer? Yeah, I'm trying to pinpoint like uh, a descriptive way to describe this beer. So it's, it's once again, it's a dry hopped pale ale, um, 6%, 55 IBUs. Uh, it says it's featuring a locally grown hop variety and our house Pilsner malt. This dry hopped pale is mm. light, refreshed, and alluringly herbal. Alluringly herbal. Alluringly herbal. That's, I don't like those two words together. No. Alluringly herbal. It's a lot of, a lot of vowels and R's. Mm-hmm. Alluringly ver- herbal. Verbal. See? Alluringly verbal. Alluring. That's how people describe me as alluringly verbal. <laughs> uh, man, I, okay. So you said the Pilsner thing, and and uh, uh, I mean, obviously now my it's it's a tainted descriptor, but <clears throat> I I can see that I can see that, but I couldn't before. So, um, man, I, it's hard to describe it. I mean, the fifty five IBUs, which they list as just BUs, um, yeah. Because they don't go by international standards. I guess not. They just go by their own. It's Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Fuck international standards. Hell yeah. Um, there's some bitterness to this beer. There's a hoppy bite to it. Um, but I think the malts stick out. And that Pilsner thing, I think it's more in the smell. Like it didn't, sm- it doesn't smell like it tastes. Like when you smell it, you're like, okay, this is going to be kind of like a smooth, lighter... Um, pale ale. But it's not though. It's got a darkness to it. A darkness, huh? Mm. Not like a beer darkness. Just you know, like an evilness. Mm. See, it's no, it's a, it's not an evilness. Uh, mm-hmm. I have to do the Canter Boner segment, but you can't see it because we're not filming this Canter Boner segment. Brought to you by this is Emily now. It's Chuggalo only, yeah. Thanks, Emily. Uh, this is uh, we've done this brewery before, and they have this like cartoonish hop drawing and uh that's really all that's on this this and it's got a green background with kind of like sun rays uh sticking out and uh which reminds me uh my dad was here this weekend he showed me this movie torah 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 have you ever seen that movie i've never seen it i've heard about it yeah. numerous times because i've participated in air shows and at air shows typically the old fighters will recreate a famous torah torah oh, torah wow. scene no shit yeah hmm. That seems fucked up. Yeah. Um, they There's a scene in that movie. So apparently at the time it was the most researched and accurate depiction of what happened on uh, when Pearl Harbor was bombed. And it was uh, like, I guess it really, uh, most of it was from the perspective of the Japanese side. Um, and this t- it's probably the 1960s, I want to say. Yeah, it's super movie. old. It's really old. Ancient. And every, all the Japanese stuff's in subtitles. So, you know, they're trying, they were going for authentic. And there's a part in the movie where the Japanese pilots are flying in. And one of the, like, most famous of them, uh, he looks up and, like, the sun is coming through the clouds. And it looks a lot like this bottle here. Except there's no hop. There was no hop in the sky. Oh, man. But uh, he's like, oh, it reminds me of the Japanese flag. Back then they had the sun rays. And, uh, and then they start bombing the shit out of Pearl Harbor. 
So did they like, change their flag after that? I believe it was after World War II, but I'm not 100. percent I really sure like that flag, flag history. Yeah, it's a cool flag. I actually thought the same thing. I, I don't like, that's mean kind of that cool in flag. an offensive no, no, no. way in any manner. Just I just the, like the design yeah, of that just, flag. Yeah, just the aesthetics of the flag. Yeah, which I'm sure have meaning, and that's why they changed it. Maybe but yeah. that's not what we're commenting on. Yeah, I agree. I I saw it and I was like, that's kind of a cool flag. But uh, that's what this bottle kind of reminded me of that uh, very old movie. And, um, you know, you see a lot of old American movies and they're like, always the hero wins, John Wayne wins, kills mm -hmm. everybody with, you know, one shot. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't like that. It was very well done. They made it accurate. They were yeah, like, as we, accurate we as still they could lost. make it back then. Yeah, it was very sad. Uh, but it was uh, cool. It kind of reminded me of Pearl Harbor, if you've ever been there. Yep. Um, got, it's just, they did a really good job with it, which surprised me. Because I, I avoid, my dad is just like all into old movies. And a lot of the old Americana ones, you uh -huh. know, where John Wayne wins. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to watch that. I just don't feel like it. That sounds dumb. But, and I avoided this movie for a while, but it's pretty good. I understand your perspective on old movies. Um, but... I kind of went through a similar phase with my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent a lot of time together, and he would watch those. Yeah. And I would just sit there and watch whatever he watched. Yeah. I, I never was like, hey, let's watch something else. Yeah. I just sat there and watched it. Right. And I didn't care. And it was actually fascinating to watch all that. Yeah, some of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of it was Like, Dirty Harry's cool. You know, there's some older movies that are pretty cool. but And then you go really old movies, you know? But I just get sick of it's always like we won. Like it's this is not how life is, and they they, they portray this America that's not what it really was. You know that's why oh, people long yeah. for these old days because they they remember Leave It to Beaver or whatever. Yeah, you're longing for something that never existed. You know people still were mad. They got angry. People still yeah. had you know strife with the government. People everything. But nope, people want to go back to the good old days. Yeah, but the good old days. It, yeah, it never existed. That's never that point of view has never made sense to me because never in never in our reality have we been able to go backwards. Right. There is only movement forward. Just forward. So So make me, the future better. Right. Yeah. Strive for excellence. Yeah. Alright, that's the camera bonus segment brought to you by Emily. Chuddalo, Emily. Thanks for listening. The beer itself is um you know, once you're once you're halfway in, this is a very um, drinkable beer. Half wow. No, it's drinkable from the get. That maybe that's the wrong word. It's very, uh, I don't know. It kind of smooths out. We have fresh palates going into this beer. We do, yeah. So the first sip, the first gulp was uh, impactful because it, I guess I wasn't expecting it. Even though there's a huge hop on the front, I just wasn't expecting what this tasted like, especially after smelling it. Um, it's, it's hoppy, but it's, it's good hoppy. It's subtle. There's no balance because they don't need, there's nothing to balance. They're, they're like, this is a hopped pale ale and that's what you're going to get. And that's what they give you. Um, but it's not it's crazy hoppy. Uh, the bitterness 55, I think is probably, I mean, I, I don't, I can't pull out how, how many bitterness units, um, would be too much for me, but this is not, this is about Once we get to the eighties and above, that's when it's crazy. that's when it that's when it begins to get very very okay very noticeable. All right, this is uh, noticeable but but refreshing. Uh, maybe it's that Pilsner uh, malt. I think it's good. Um, I don't think it's excellent, but I think it's definitely good. So I'm at a three seven five. I'm bouncing between three seven five and four, but I settled on three seven five. Okay. Yeah. I think that this is an unremarkably delicious beer. Okay, that's a great way to describe it. I think I was. There's nothing that stands that. out. Yeah. It's like this makes it great mm -hmm. because of right. Yeah. I love this, this one feature flavor or yeah. whatever. Unremarkably delicious. It's just. This is a beer that would be great to walk into your favorite. Mm -hmm. bar pub or tavern and your bartender just slides it down the bar to you you know, mm -hmm. just like bam right after yeah. work having a couple of these cold ones yep <clears throat> and it would be a great way to yep. unwind at the That's end of good, the day good, good point because it's easy to drink <clears throat> it's delicious but mm -hmm. it's not delicious for a particular reason um it's just a good beer yeah 
I like the fact I like mm-hmm. the I like that they're venturing into this mm-hmm. territory that they're using Pilsner malts, mm-hmm. but then they're hopping it so that it's not an IPA. Um, it's not a Pilsner. Right. It's this kind of. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Amalgamation. Uh, it's not amalgam. I mean, amalgamation does fit. It's like it's like both sides are conceding. Like the mm. Pilsner side is conceding some ground to IPA, and the mm. IPA side is conceding some ground to the Pilsner. Yeah. And they're meeting in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a it's like a compromise. A compromise. compromise. That's yeah. the word I was yeah. looking for. Compromise. So this is a compromising beer, mm-hmm. and and I actually uh, enjoy it a lot. So I give it a four point two five. I think it's, like I said, I would be absolutely delighted to get this beer wherever I go Mm -hmm. um, because I know it's not going to offend my palate whatsoever. It's just going to be delicious. And I feel like you could have a couple of these. Oh, yeah. And after like two or three, you probably still wouldn't be like, I don't want any more of those. Right, yeah. It's probably a good idea to stop having them because it is 6%. Yeah. But I don't think it would be because of... It would be because of the flavor. Yeah, right. No, I don't think so either. You yeah. could easily drink you this wouldn't get for a, of this, yeah. a long time. I think if you had this in the brewery, I think it would be... Um, so I went to Pittsburgh and, and had one of their breweries. This is a basic IPA. Yeah. Which I, I realized later it was a basic IPA. But when I was there, I was like, oh my God, everyone needs to try this beer. Because it's amazing. But I don't know why that was the case. Maybe I was just really in the moment. You brought that beer yeah, back. Yeah, I brought that beer back. Uh, it was it had a frog on it. Um, yeah. And when and then I got back home and I had one and I was like, well, this is fine. Like, it's fine. And I don't think this, this is better than fine. But I think uh, if I had this at Double Mountain, I'd probably be like, holy shit. Everyone needs to try this beer. It's really good. I bet double. But I think mixed in the 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 you know, humdrum or whatever Matt calls. Yeah. The just the the daily the daily grind. Uh, yeah, it's like okay, this is a good beer. This I think fits. I think, let's play a new game. Yeah. Called guess Matt's score. Guess Matt's. Oh, I like this game. Guess Matt's score. I I'm wrong all the, no matter what, I'm wrong. Let's just say that right off the bat, I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we're but I'll I'll no you're right to that. because you you guys have similar uh, opinions on a lot of things uh, beer wise. Guess the match score. I'm gonna go with the same score I gave it three seven five. I'm gonna split the difference and go with four. Okay. I think he would be um, pleasantly and I, and I'm gonna give him one of these beers mm-hmm. so he can he can update this game. Yeah. Um, I think he would enjoy the beer, but I don't. But like I said, it's unremarkable. It's yeah. good. Yeah. But no, I like that descriptor. That's 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 a really good descriptor. Yeah, it would be great. It's good. It's a good beer for that brewery. Like, I was out the other day uh, with Chuggalo, Randy Orton, and I had a cocktail, and I was like, "That's enough of this. I'm just gonna get a beer, boat show. Just give me a boat show." And this is what that if I lived in Oregon or Oregon or whichever. I would say that I would have the cocktail yeah. and be like, All right, I need a beer. Just give me a, a vaporizer. Yeah. Cause that's, it's a great just finisher. It's a, yeah, it's a solid yeah. like go to comfort zone, yep. comfort zone beer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This would definitely fall in the comfort zone area. Yeah. I love it. That's okay. boat show for me here. Love it. It's wonderful. So let's see the other. Yep, that's it. it is the dry hopped. Okay. Okay. So the next beer, we're moving on to the next beer for all the people that can't see us, uh, which is everyone um, other than you and I. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from Port City Brewing from Alexandria, Virginia. This is called Essential Pale Ale. It is also a dry hopped pale ale. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this. Um, and yeah, I'll talk through a little bit more of this beer as we... I'm going to the other side of the country. Crack it. Okay, yeah. So from coast to coast, basically, right? Yeah, coast to coast. Oregon, West basically. Coast. Headed to West Coast, Alexandria. I think it's on the coast, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's very far from all the bases and whatnot over there. Oh, yeah, no, Alexandria, that's right. It's, it's there. It's, it's there it's in the mix, isn't right it? Right in the mix. 
Okay, so uh, Port City Brewing, uh, they've been around for or, um, uh, since 2011, so 10 years. This is 5.3%, so it's a little bit dialed down. Um, they do not post the BUs or IBUs, uh, but they do say tasting notes. Crisp, stone fruit, and refreshing. Mm. I don't know what stone fruit tastes like, so Me neither. I'm not sure. They also said the color is deep golden. Um, I can't tell. Yeah, it's in a brown brown yep. bottle. So both of these are bottled beers, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Uh, no, we did not pour it into a glass. We're just partaking from just the bottle. Just drinking beer. Yep. All right. Yeah, so this is the Counter Boner segment brought to you by Trevolo Emily. Thanks again. Port City Brewing, their logo is actually really nice. I kind of like it. It'd be a cool t-shirt. If that was like the... The chest uh, crest or the chest logo, and then like on the back, it could say like Alexandria or something. Mm -hmm. um, if it was like a full shirt, probably not. It's too much. Too much, yeah. I agree. But I like it. It's a cool logo. The lighthouse um, with the, again, the light rays coming off of it. Um, but, you know, we don't really talk about logos all that much. The, the actual bottle art is, uh, it looks to be, it's a, it's a little uh, weird. It's, it, my head says pine trees, but the color says regular, you know, fall mm. trees, fall, um, what are, you know, whatever kind of trees, uh, oak trees with leaves that turn brown in the fall. But it does say year round. On Hardwoods. The Hardwoods? Hardwoods lose their leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what are the ones that don't? Evergreens. Evergreens. Pine trees. Okay. Pine trees are evergreens. Yeah. The only evergreens, or the only pine trees that do lose their needers, needles are tamaracks. Tamaracks. Hmm. I didn't know that. Those are beautiful trees, by the way. When okay. the tamaracks lose their, their needles yeah. in the fall, it's like the Ooh. most beautifully brilliant golden tree you've really? ever seen. Oh, man. <clears throat> I wanted to check that out. You should. So I've never been to Alexandria, but I've been to D.C. just for a few days. <clears throat> And uh, I don't didn't see anything like this image here. Um, it's very nice. It's kind of like a little a bay or something, mm -hmm. uh, and the trees just go right into the bay. Uh, and there's a little looking looking um, kind of point, uh, but it's a it's a road that winds around a mountain um, or a hill, probably a hill. And, and maybe this isn't in D.C. Maybe this is somewhere in the Smoky Mountains or something. Um, and there's an old Volkswagen Beetle um, driving on this, this mountain road. And uh, the sun is setting, I would say. Probably setting. Looks to be the west. I think so, yeah. You know, the west side of the can is where the sun is. So, yeah. it's setting. Uh, and the clouds are low. It's pretty cool. Pretty nice little, um, it's like shape art. It's like, it reminds me of... Um, Almost like that uh, 50s graphic art mm -hmm. that came out yeah. like from the government, you know? Yeah. They would produce mm -hmm. like those posters that would yeah. be very similar. Like loose lips sink ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. ships were yeah. all like triangles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, that's a very good observation there. That's a, that's about, it's a very nice can. Uh, if you, a uh, bottle, if you want to see it, um, see it. That's the can of runner segment brought to you by Emily. The, so one thing I noticed about this bottle was that the, um, the like bottle date. Yeah. Which is a time, I think. Yes. Uh, it says good tidings. I noticed I that like as well. That. That's very nice. Thanks. Mm. Thanks, Port City. I don't know good, why. Good tidings they, to you too. But why did they print that mm -hmm. time on there? I don't know. Like what's the point of that to the consumer? Yeah. How does that help the consumer? I don't know. Maybe it's not for the consumer. What time was yours printed? Or made uh, seven fifty three thirteen. Same same time. Oh wow, same time. That's fast. Definitely. That's fast bottling. Yeah, very fast. Within a second, these two were made. Um, and they're like bottle bros. Yeah, bottle bros. Like twin twin. Do you have a third one in there? Twin bottle. I do at my house. Oh, at your house. I'll I wonder what time it. that one was. I'm, I'm gonna look at it when I get home. Um, I like the tasting notes. Uh, being put on here. But um, it doesn't do anything for me. 
Like these specific ones. <clears throat> as in you don't get it in the beer or as in... I mean, well, stone fruit, unless you're like a big stone fruit <laughs> fan. Yeah, I don't know fruit. what that... I'm sure it's a some kind of wild fruit. Yeah, but what do you... I mean, you can't get right. it at Kroger. Not, right. No, you know, Maybe Jungle who, Gyms has it. So, so who in... So who that visits Port City Brewing in Alexandria, mm -hmm. Virginia? Yeah. Who knows what stone fruit is? Yeah. No you know. Clue. Right. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. Put something more. The tasting notes need to be relatable. Yeah. Something you know, that people can taste. Oranges, apples, bananas. Well, I really taste pears, stone fruit in this. Maybe, you know, I don't even maybe. taste the stone fruit and stone fruit because I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. What I'm tasting. Stones and fruit. Stones. Yeah. Like gravel fruit. Gravel fruit. I can taste the gravel fruit. Um, crisp and refreshing. Those aren't. I mean, yeah, crisp is something we would describe. And I think we've described beer as refreshing. I, I, I did it, I think, earlier today. Yeah. So it was refreshing. Uh, but, I don't know. Those aren't tasting notes. But, I, I mean, the pretentious beer drinker would say, oh, yes, this is crisp and refreshing. Um, but you need more, I think. I just don't think those tasting notes are very good, <clears throat> very thought out. Crisp isn't a flavor. It's not a flavor. Or a tasting note. No. Re refreshing is it's a feeling it's a it's a verb in action right it's refreshing to refresh yeah yeah um so that that's a little that's different but when you really get into the beer it smells more beer like but i think it's less good than the previous beer um it this this beer's bitterness is different than the hot bitterness in the um, Double Mountain. Mm -hmm. The bitterness in this one is probably the malt. And I don't know uh, specifically what kind of malts they're using. But that I would guess that's what it is. It's the malts. Um, and it, it might just you're be right. an East Coast versus West Coast thing. It could be. I think you're right. I think that's a... I think you're going down the right path. Yeah, they also did something different with the Double Mountain where they were like, this is a hopped beer, which this one said, but they're like, we use Pilsner malts. And maybe this one used Pilsner malts, but this one, it just has kind of like a, gosh, how can I describe it? It's a, hmm. Well, the hops aren't as prevalent. The bitterness is it's not as bitter yeah it's a more subtle bitterness but it's um it lingers in the back of your throat and it's um gosh i wish i could i could pinpoint what this is it's just uh i can't just can't i don't know what that 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 taste is i'm, I'm running through all the things i've eaten in my life right now do you like the taste do you not like the taste yeah, I think the taste is, again, average. I'll have to steal your word, unremarkable. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's bad. Right. Like, this is not an off-putting beer. Um, it's not as good as Double Mountain. 3-5. If I think of that taste that's in that's just lingering, I'll, I'll jump in and say it. Do it. Yeah, jump in. Um, I agree with you. It's not as good as Double Mountain. Uh... I would oh, yeah. pick Double Mountain over this hands down any day. So I think of these on the scale of like a spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just we know spectrums. Yeah. Um, Double Mountain trends more towards the IPA side mm -hmm. of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. This one trends more towards the Pilsner side of the mm -hmm. spectrum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, are, you already said it. There's not as, it's not as bitter. It's not as hoppy. It's not as all of the others however the other beer the double mountain vaporizer had all of those things but they were all really subdued to where none of it was overpowering or overbearing and you know yeah turning it into a one and done beer mm -hmm. or or two and max um this beer is more towards like i don't know it's like a combination of like um, not a light beer, not a Miller Light or a Bud Light, but no. more like more like a Budweiser yeah, or a yeah. Miller, like an MGD. I was just thinking that. But then also with, a, you know, the brewer threw in like an extra bushel of hops, mm -hmm. like just just a little bit more. Yep. This is a hops beer 
for your spoiled drinker. Yeah. That's a that's a good way to yeah. put it. That's a really good way to put it. It's it's very approachable. Matt would say it's a it's a very approachable mm -hmm. beer. I think it's a good beer. Um, once again, I'd be happy to have it if someone gave me one of these. Um, but it is unremarkable. Um, <clears throat> and it is crisp and refreshing. I agree with that. Um, but I think I would get turned off of these after a few. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other one, the Double Mountain Vaporizer, I could that could be like an all nighter. You can yeah, definitely. have the yeah. you know you can you could sustain on those throughout mm -hmm. an evening, and never regret it. Um, this one, I think, after probably the second or third, I would be looking for another option. Yeah. So. I don't know. That's just me. I so I gave the Double Mountain Vaporizer a four point two five. This one gets a three point seven five, um, just because it's not as good. Not as good. I agree. <clears throat> I like to judge a lot of these beers on how uh, how shareable they are. Like like a, if it's a five, I'm telling the world. I'm gonna tell the world about this yeah. beer. You know, if it's in the fours. Uh, I want to share it with at least you and Matt. And then in the threes, it's like, I, I had this beer. Check it off my list. It's like I'm happy I had it. It's like, it's in your Rolodex. And if someone yeah. else references it, you can yeah. be like, I've had that. Yeah, I've had that beer. <clears throat> now, if it's a two or less, then I start, it starts to be like. Then it's a warning. It's, in a, it's a warning. Yeah. Now it's a, if it's in the like zeros, anything between zero and, and zero seven five. Have we ever gotten there? Maybe with the wild uh, Ohio. I don't remember. God, that was awful. It was so bad. Um, if we're there, then it's like I need to share this beer for the mere novelty of how bad it is. Right. Because it's so awful. Now, I will say that I was talking to somebody. Uh, a It's, a, it's a, a degree removed from a Chuggalo. It's a Chuggalo's wife. Okay. Yeah. And she said we should do. She's allergic. She's uh um, what's the gluten allergy? Uh, celiac or something like. That. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she said we should do a gluten free episode. Full episode. Full episode. Dedicated gluten -free to gluten free. And I said, beer. you know what? That's not a terrible idea, but we won't do a Wild Ohio. Yeah. And she recommended a beer. I have to ask oh, her okay. again. That's good. Which, which beer it was? <clears throat> I also agree. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Do we a should, whole full episode just yeah, on gluten free. Gluten free beer. We'll have some gluten free snacks. Ooh, yeah. Um, which a lot of the good snacks are gluten free, and some gluten free beer. Yeah, and then rate them. Just rock it out, gluten free style. Let's do it. It's coming. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, tune tune in. Tune in. <laughs> tune in to all the episodes. We might do it. Tune in to all the episodes to find the gluten free episode because we're not going to tell you until. Right, but we are telling you that the bad beer episode is in two weeks, which yes. is which is my week, believe it or not. But I'll do I'll do beer next week because <clears> I don't <throat> believe Matt's going to be here again next week. Oh, okay. I'll right. confirm. I I don't know. I think right. I think he said two weeks. <clears throat> but uh, I never received a text saying where are you guys at today. So yeah, so he so de it's definitely we were right about. I worried about the same thing where he's going to be like, hey, you guys coming or? I considered having the full conversation with you last night. Maybe he wouldn't when you texted me about this. There was so chuckle there was confusion on our end as to whether or not Matt was available or not, and I thought that he, I thought that he was leaving in two weeks. Oh, so I thought ooh. the twenty seventh. See now was you got his, me worried. That was his last week here. And then he would be gone for two weeks. But I was like, JT is really confident in his messaging to me. But he won't be. And I am very unconfident in my yeah. messaging. Well, the only thing that made sense was that WrestleMania was this weekend. And Matt traditionally goes with his uh, his his childhood friends See, you know, you to know, do the WrestleMania yeah, stuff. You know all that stuff. Yeah. I know that stuff too, but I don't know that WrestleMania Yeah, right. Yeah, my kids are really into it and I love it. It's awesome. Heaven Boys is a blessing yeah i don't i wouldn't mind if it was a girl if they were you know if i had girls but uh, i really love having boys me too so they watch wrestling and they wrestle each other and it's hilarious and it's awesome so we watch wrestlemania i know that matt goes to his uh his home for that so and weren't they preparing to leave when we were there last week um it seemed like it but maybe not 
Well, it's hard to, it's tell hard to tell because their house looks like they're preparing to leave anyway. Yeah, their house. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, I'll be interested to see how that turns out. Oh, I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're. Oh, they're over the moon. Oh, I'm sure they're way excited that that countertop is going to be amazing. Uh, yeah. Noises. noises. Outside noises. Yeah, threw me off, but that's okay. Just, so Matt won't be here, I don't think, and again next week. I'll have the beer. Uh, and then after that, bad beer week. What do you think about the way that I've been doing it, where we do like a Kolsch off or a, I like that. a pale ale off, dry, dry hop pale ale off? Like, I think it's cool to compare the beers. I was concerned with this one because it's dry hop pale ale, so I knew that they were going to be IPA kind of style yeah. or geared. And I was concerned about rating the second beer because then your mm. palate is yeah, wrecked palate according to, to Matt. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think we had that problem. I don't think I like the idea of rating the same beer. The same type of beer. I think it's fun. Yeah, it puts it pins them against each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like and this one, I mean, across the country, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was unintentional. I didn't even consider that until we got here and I began to introduce the second beer. Yeah. So that's very fun. Um so yeah, West Coast, West Coast was the best coast today. Today. In today's battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Port City, not not bringing it. Not bringing it, but we've had Port City before, right? Yeah, we've had Port and City. I wonder if they brought it, I can't remember. That's unremarkable. I wish I could remember <laughs> all these beers. Just hundreds of beers. We have had hundreds of beers now. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's an impressive catalog of yeah. beer that we've Oh had. yeah, we have a really good resume of beers. It's neat. Um, I think we're 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 at a different level now. Um, even though last week we had some some strife, uh, I think that taste wise we are uh, we are at a different level. Like we can do, we can we can uh, we can hang with certain people. Now I know Matt's got friends who are at like four thousand. <clears throat> that's yeah. fine you've had 4,000 beers but I think we're at a level now where we can intelligently speak about beer and we were and we started this podcast to be non pretentious because at the beginning we were like I've had a couple of beers and I, I think this beer sucks yeah and now we're like really getting into the nitty-gritty I think so I don't I don't know if I would ever want to like fully advertised that I've had like 4,000 beers. No, no. Yeah, I don't think so. I would different have, beers. Yeah, like, I've had 4,000 different I've beers. I've definitely had 4,000 beers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I believe it. But I couldn't, I couldn't, maybe, I don't think so. Maybe 3,000 for me. Uh, I don't know. Like total beers in your lifetime. Like total beers? Like total beers in your, this is a fun question, actually. How many total beers do you think? I mean, yeah, I mean, in the Navy, I was just drinking all the time. Right. Gosh, I couldn't tell you. Right. Yeah. Could be. Could Let's be think 4, about 000. that. Could be 4,000. And, and I want the chugglers out there to think about that. Yeah, let me... I'll do some math. Bounce that. For the next episode. Yeah. I'll I just wanna... think like... I'll just make some averages for... Exactly. You know, average Navy consumption, average post-Navy, pre-Navy, uh, which was all illegal. But statute of limitations way, is way up on that. Oh, yeah. I hope. You're in the clear. You're good. So I'll do some math and I'll, I'll figure out how many beers I think I've had in my life. It's just got to be a, a ballpark estimate, and I'm curious if the Chuggalos will chime in on yeah. social media yeah. and play the same game. Yeah. It, how many beers Let us know how many beers lifetime. you've had. I, my mom could probably tell you because it's probably like 10 or 20. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, give it a, give it a good thought. Like, yeah. be honest. Yep. There's no judgment. No judgment. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, come on. We're all on different levels here. Yep. But advertising four thousand different beers, I don't know. That's, yeah, it's just at some point it ties in. You know, your LinkedIn profile and your Untapped profile start to bleed into each other, and, and everyone's like, "I can't hire this guy." And unless you you're all the time or what? Unless you're in the beer industry. Yeah, if you're in the beer industry, that makes sense. Make, yeah, it makes sense. You know, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're in a profession where drinking four thousand unique beers is valuable. I just, yeah, yeah, I could go down a rabbit hole with that, but I'm, right. not, I'm not gonna. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I don't have a segment three or anything. I don't either. I think we, I think we, we covered it. We nailed it. Yeah, we nailed this one. 
Uh, let us know how many beers you've had in your whole life. Um, simple math. And then uh, let, let me know if you think you have a name for my uh, recording studio here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. We got all kinds of social media. Let us know if you got an idea. Next week, we'll be back here in the dining room. And, uh, and hopefully soon in the bar. Oh, man. Which is really what awesome. we're going to have uh, a name for. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Did you make progress on it? It's done except the epoxy. So you're still waiting on the well, epoxy because be of the temperature degrees, range. Yeah. It has to be between right. 70 and 80 the entire time that the drying process or the hardening process. So you're looking at probably late May. Probably late May, yeah. And even that is risky. There was one weekend where I had my window and I totally dropped the ball. It doesn't matter. It's too yeah. risky at this yeah. point. Yeah, it is. The weather changes so quick. So uh, someone had a good idea uh, of, uh, I, he's not a chuggalo, but my, my good friend Luke, he said, maybe just have a like a total blowout, like an opening of the bar and let the spills happen. but And then cover it. And let that first day be... The permanence? I don't think so, though. I worked really hard on that bar, and I don't want to stain it with <laughs> a bunch of bullshit. You, know? you want it pristine. I want it to look like a you know, legit bar. Yeah. I still don't have the arm rails and stuff. Like, there's these you know beveled uh, arm things. I have them in my cart at Home Depot, but I haven't, haven't bought them yet. Lumber is super expensive. It's so expensive. It's ridiculous. I would maybe look at alternatives yeah. to that. I might just leave it squared I'll, off. I would leave it as is. Yeah. I don't think people will have a problem with it being squared off. Um, I would research it, and over time, I, th I think you would find maybe alternatives to yeah. that, like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's kind of scalloped edge that you kind of yep. fit your forearms yep. into, and you sit there, and you, yeah. you belly up to the bar, and you plop your forearms in there, and you've got your beer. Yep, they specifically yeah. sell this. Yeah. You know, it's already, it's already sanded down and everything, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on buying it. Hmm. Because, again, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. So, I'm not a conformist. It's Do your what house. I want. It's your it's house. My bar, man. It's your bar. You can make it however yeah. you want. So, uh, eventually, we'll be doing episodes up there. I'm gonna get a couch, get some TVs. It's gonna be a co cool little sports bar up there. We'll see how it goes. Do some episodes up there. Start running a book out of it. Oh, become a bookie. I should. I should. I I can break knees. Everyone's got a side hustle. Yeah, I don't. I should have one. I don't either. Yeah. But I'm saying you could, since you're going to have a bar. Yeah. I'm going to be a bookie. Yeah. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm going to be a bookie. If you want to place bets, let me know. Um, it's definitely a pyramid scheme. I'm going to start betting. I'm going to pay you with pe other people's losses. Um, and that's it. That's episode 135. Thanks for joining us. Brew Crew Podcast. Hey, uh, that's it. Yeah, any parting words? Smell you later. All right.